Hey everybody, welcome to my episode today, and we're going to call this one, How Not to Build a Cigar Box Guitar. So I know you're thinking, hey, why doesn't he call all of his episodes, <laughs> How Not to Build a Cigar Box Guitar? Yeah, you're right, because a lot of my episodes are about the mistakes I've made. Anyway, hang with me on this one. Um, we're going to make a guitar, but it's not going to be a cigar box guitar, and we're going to call this episode Front Porch Train. How not to build a cigar, box guitar, front porch train. I hope that will all fit on the title screen. Why front porch train? Well, I was out there running my weed eater today around the house. I saw the front porch and I saw the pillars on the front porch support columns. And all of a sudden it dawned on me. I remember seeing pictures of our kind of music actually started with people stringing uh, stealing the wire off the broom, much to their mother's dismay, and pounding two nails in one of the support posts of the front porch, and then jamming a bottle in there, moving the bottle around, and then hitting on it uh, with a, a pocket knife or thumping it with their finger and sliding the bottleneck up and down. And that's really how our craft started. So anyway, that, along with a phone call I got the other day, is the inspiration for this episode. Um, we are basically going to build a two-string diddly bow and electrify it because I got a call from the school superintendent the other day. Now, you might be asking yourself, why would I be getting a call from uh, the school superintendent? Well, I'm a... I'm, you're probably assuming that my kids are in trouble. No, that was me. My kids are actually good in school. Uh, but what business would the school superintendent have to do with me? Well, I got a shocker for you people. I actually sit on the school board. You know, you've been asking yourself, what's wrong with public education? <laughs> well, you just got the answer. Anyway, got a message the other day from the superintendent. Uh, when something happens, the board members find out. You still don't believe I'm on the school board? Well, you know what? Let's take a little break here. Time out. I'm going to give you a clip of me actually sitting up there complimenting some of the other board members in one of the most recent board meetings. Watch this. Uh, I wasn't here in the last meeting. Um, I was sitting in my office in Beverly Hills most of the time. Uh, thanks to someone who was live streaming it over Facebook, I was pleasantly surprised at this was able to function without my presence. So. <laughs> there you go. I told you. Believe me now. Yeah, a lot of faces to this one. Anyway, so I get this call, and there is a school uh, in our system that's been there for quite a while. Um, there's a pump shed. So before we got city water, there was a pump and a pump shed. Well, anybody, I don't know the circumstances exactly. I can figure it out. But somebody in the middle of the night ran through the pump shed in their pickup truck. Anyway, what does that have to do with this episode? It has everything to do with this episode. Now, the school superintendent I got, he's been eyeballing my cigar box guitars that I built. How does he know that I build cigar box guitars? Well, probably because I told him to force feed my videos on him just like I do everybody else, like you guys, right? Anyway, he's been kind of hinting around a roundabout way that he might actually like one. Um, and so I got an idea. When I went to the school where this happened, like a good school board member does, and got out of the vehicle and went over and saw this building being flattened out, what was left of it, I saw this board laying there. Which board? Yeah, this board. You know what, Superintendent? I just found your guitar, and we can hang it on the wall of your office, and you can get front porch trained. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's pretty redneck to put in a, in a school superintendent's office. Well, no, it, it, it's not going to be just this board. I mean, we're going to fancy it up good. Uh, I got some nice stuff here. You see this yardstick? Well... Look, it's from Beverly Hills, California. This is a 90210 yardstick. You know what this costs? Yeah, same as the other ones, but you get the point, right? And then look at this bottle I can put 
uh, and used for a bridge. Well, this is from Max Factor, Hollywood. Can you all read? Look, there it is. I just screwed up to focus on the camera. Anyway, stick with me here. We're going to go to the bench and we're going to build the superintendent a two string guitar out of this board from the damaged building and, and some other stuff I got laying around. All right, before we start laying this out, let's take a look at what we got here. Um, the board's there. It's already got the nail holes here, so I'll use those for the tuner holes. We got the tuners there. We got a bone bridge we're going to put right there. Uh, fretboard. Well, what do you know? I can use this uh, this yardstick for a fretboard. I just wonder where I'm going to find. I want it to be 25 and a half scale. Well, what do you know? The bottle, my Hollywood bottle is right there 25 and a half. I don't want to be too fancy about this when I put some frat markers and I can have frats but people are going to want to know where they're at so maybe I can use some of these drywall screws to go where the frats markers are supposed to be. I got a great coil here it's under wood cover. I got this so cheap it was almost free. Um, you're going to want to know how I got that and where. Uh, we got strings so we got our string keepers got a jack, got the volume control, got matchbooks, got a coin to put in there, um, two strings, there we are, we got them, a 36 and the 20p string off of, uh, don't miss my episode about strings, that was quite enlightening. Anyway, time to start measuring things out and getting to work here. First off, I want to let you know that if you're expecting a Jack White video about how to build a, a diddly bow, uh, sorry, I didn't have any period correct costumes or a production crew or anything like that. So anyway, I'll put a link to that right up in the upper right hand corner there. You can have a look at that for yourself. Okay, guys, you know in our business that we end up making changes along the way sometimes. And I'm going to have to make a change almost right away on this thing. I really wanted to retain these nail holes for tuner holes. But... As I started looking at this, this angle isn't going to work out for me here. Um, because in order for me to have the hole on the tuner peg down enough to where the strings come up across the nut right there, I'm going to have to take the top down about that much. And then I'm also going to, because of the thickness of the tuner I need it to be, have to take about that much off the bottom. That would leave... The tuner sitting at a slant like this, I really don't want that. It would be better if it were this way. But in any event, I'm going to have to start off by nubbing this board off right here and then working the top end and getting rid of this as much as I dislike it. Okay, so I've marked the center line of the board. I've marked the center line of the uh, yardstick here and I think I'm going to dress this out instead of matchbooks I'm going to use uh, playing cards uh, somehow here all the way down uh, but I'm going to need a, a spot for my coin up here and the tuner so I'm going to come back from the top of the board to give myself room for all that about three inches and we'll put a mark there and there we go. My knot is going to go on the other side of this. So I put a mark on the center of the knot. I'm going to lay that there like so. Line that up with the center piece. And make sure my back mark edge that I just done is right. And I'm going to make, make a mark there. And where the edges of my knot are and that right there between here and here this part I'm gonna have to chisel out a bit so that knot sits down in there centered up with what is going to be my fretboard so now I'm going to take And make a couple marks here and route out some of this so my tuners sit lower here I don't want these uh, tuner pegs and the holes sticking way up 
Uh, they need to be recessed here, so I'm going to cut some down here, and I'm also going to route out quite a bit of this. And I also need to make sure that wherever my tuners sit, since this is going to be two strings, those strings need to be over the yardstick about here and here, which my tuners can be uh, not right on top of each other, but they need to be fairly close to where the string pull is right around here. So I'll put those there, which means when we turn them around, if those tuners are there, there's not going to be enough room to turn them. So I'm also going to have to take a section of this off on each side in addition to doing my router work. Once I've got that done, I'll show you what it looks like. Now, I almost forgot, I put my mark, this will be the top here, but I put a mark right here that I need to route this down to sink my tuner uh, pegs down into a little bit. I almost forgot, I have to cut a, a line right here uh, so I don't have to keep the router bit straight. So I just cut that cheater line right down to there and I do that with this saw, it only took a couple seconds. Anyway, you just cut that line there and make sure it's right and then I can just start routing this and it'll route all this and this edge will stay straight all right we just got off the router and used a couple other tools but I've cut uh, the top of this board down to where the tuners can go in uh, uh, be adjusted and still stick off to the side like so uh, so I'm going to mark off of spots for the tuner holes, drill those in. I also cut this uh, groove in for the knot. Uh, I'm going to use a bone knot, and I've rounded this side of it down on a belt sander. So when the strings come from this way, it comes over the top, and it's nice and smooth. I'll cut the grooves in where I need to. And then I've taken... A fret board that's 25 and a half scale and laid it like so where that uh, nut groove on the fretboard lines up with the nut here and then by putting this here I can mark off where the frets go on this yardstick and I'll do that then I'll drill a couple of holes and mount the yardstick to the board so we can tell where our fret lines would be so when we're playing this thing it it gives you something to go by, but there's graphics to put under here first. A little detail here. Uh, now these tuners are going to sit like this with the gear down. But in order to mark this out, I'm going to find about where the center of the tuner is here and make a mark on the board. That, may, that way I make sure that I've got enough sticking out here uh, and there's room for two tuners. So I put a little mark here about where the th center of the tuner is. And then I take my square and put it on the edge like so and give me a mark there I pick it up take it to the other side and do this and then where I want the tuners I'm going to put a coin up here so I need to put them down about oh, like so that will give me plenty of room to mount them on the back like like so and still have everything I need so I'm going to drill holes right there uh, one size is for the tuner uh, itself and then the other one is for the retainer that goes up on top and that's a, just a tad bit bigger all right there we go now we need just a little bit bigger bit to go down a tad into there for the retainer all right, there we go. Good. Now you see, I've got this little piece of tape here that uh, serves as a depth gauge. So when I'm drilling this in, because it doesn't go all the way through, the bigger bit doesn't go all the way through. There's actually this bit uh, that is the size of the post. And this is the size of the retainer. So I got this little piece of tape on here to serve as a gauge so I know when I'm deep enough. Okay, we drilled the holes to hold these little tiny screws that hold the tuners on. Now some of you with the keener eye might have noticed that these are not the same tuners, same kind of tuners, same color of tuners 
Well, I'm relatively sure given the high quality of this instrument, that that's not going to be a huge problem. So let's run these down without twisting them off. There we go. Oh, ain't that pretty. All right, before I carry on with the next step here, I want to show you something really cool. I got something awesome in the mail today. I've got a, a story, a book called Daddy Moonshine, the story of Marvin Popcorn Sutton. This is really special to me because it's written by Sky Sutton, a daughter of uh, Popcorn Sutton. Yeah, this book is really cool. Um, I got a, a card from Sky. And um, she autographed the book here, and, and I, I really like that. Sky, you didn't have to do that. You're the best. I'm going to put a link down uh, below in the comments area where you can get your own copy of this book. All right, I'm going to put this away with my Hassel Adkins and Jessica White stuff. They all knew each other. And once again, thank you, Sky. All right, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to take this mock-up off of here and we're going to pull the nut out of the groove and we're going to measure from the inside right about the middle of where that groove for the nut goes down 25 and a half inches down the neck now the bottle that I've got I measured it's about 35 millimeters from here to here and um, I also found the center of it and so I'm going to use this as the bridge so the strings will come across here and then um, I'm going to need to carve this down into the neck about halfway uh, so the strings again saddle across here So I went over and marked off uh, 25 and a half inches and then I took the bottom and because that dot is there and because the bottle is see-through I put those two marks there in the in the bottle let me do it this way where you can see it like so and then I traced it out to get that line now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some cuts here of the right depth with a saw and then I'm going to take a sanding drum and hollow this out where this nests right down in there like so. so you can see here I've made a cut at this edge at this edge and then one down to the middle there and I'm going to make a series of smaller cuts in between matching that radius so it will seat the bottle and then when I'm done, I'll take this on a drill and sand it down nice and smooth from this way over here so it will seat this bottle nice about halfway down the diameter of the bottle. Okay, the camera's going to jump here, but I've made these cuts fairly close to each other. Now, if I take a chisel, these pieces of wood will start popping out like that. And then I can finish the radius out with the sanding drum like so there we go all right there's the chisel and mallet work uh, that's all right we're going to smooth this out a little bit but it fits down in there you got enough of it sticking up we're going to take that down a little bit uh, by running the sanding drum into it till the bottle seats nice all right, I can just use this chisel a little bit by hand. Knock down the rough stuff here like so. Where it's a little bit high. Yeah, given the quality of the instrument, I see. I think you're going to see too much. I don't think you're going to see too much of this in the Fender or Gibson factory, right? And I just take this and... That feels pretty smooth. I can put that in there. Now I'm going to put this yardstick that I'm going to use for a fretboard 
up on the edge up there and pull this bottle out because we're going to have to cut a section out of here. So I'm going to mark where that intersects the line, which is 24 and 3 eighths, and then 26 and an eighth. And I'm going to cut that out of there like this. Yeah, these saws are pretty handy. There we go. And then I'm going to cut this out here and put that line there. So that'll be that. All right, just like that. That looks good. Now I'm going to come off to the back. I'm going to cut this off. Uh, flush at 32 and then I'm gonna have to take a long bit and run it from the flush end here up through here where I'm gonna have my volume control here and my pick up here so I'm gonna take a Forstner bit and uh, hide the wiring up in here and I'll show you that in a minute okay I'm doing a little layout here this is gonna be a little bit tricky I've got a pickup that a coil pickup that's gonna lay across here and I want to hide all the wires and so I'm going to take this long uh, drill bit here let me see if I can go through here without knocking the camera over and you see I'm going to run it up uh, the board down in there about so far and then I can put the jack right here I've got the volume control in a three lug potentiometer that is going to be right above the uh, channel that I'm going to drill here. Let me move this down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, this will run up to here. My coil will be in this area right here. So this will be long enough to get up to the coil and then this hole will be down most of the way down through the, the main board. Uh, the first thing I've got to do uh, right now is cut this out like so for this lug now I'm going to set this down in here with a Forstner bit and then I'm going to make a cover for this so this will be receded down in here and then this will ride up here so this button won't or the control knob won't be sticking way up but uh, let me do this here and that involves cutting out some of this now the string holders will be ahead of this just a tad so while you're playing this all this stuff will be out of the way There we go. I can drop that right down in there like so. And my wires will connect through here. I'll just drill this through with the long bit and then make sure that my channel, I've got a little hole right here where everything will come together. Okay, so this bit is long and it has run all the way down. Yeah that it is run right up to where the coil will be. So when I drill the wire, lay the coil here and drill down, I'll intercept this panel. We'll get a better look at it. You can see it there coming in from the back and there going the other way. All right, there we go. We're getting closer. Okay, I'm going to speed things up here because we've done a lot of similar stuff in my other videos. So I want to show you the yardstick is cut off. I've put some holes in where this is going to bolt down. And then I've also uh, put holes in it for the string keepers, the slotted, uh, these tension pins that we use. Uh, those are going to go in right here. So what I've done is I've taken this lid, which is off an, an old uh, uh, tobacco tin and... Um, I cut it out. Uh, remember, this will fit down into here, and we've got a groove right there that will feed the wire. So, doing my wiring here, I put the tape here, the copper tape, um, because once we drive these tension pins down through here, like so, 
we're going to want to make sure that they ground uh, because this is in contact with this and because this is metal and this will be in contact with all this and this all goes um, gets screwed down here uh, this will all be in contact so we'll be able to ground our strings by this method which is typical to what we do um, of course we've drilled down through the lid or not the lid the um, the wood here and then on the bottom I've drilled those holes just a tad bigger so the strings will go down through there the keeper will hang up on the bottom of the tension pin and um, we'll hide all our wiring in here this way so I'm going to put this together and show you how it looks okay that's what that looks like and then we just flip this over like so Now when the strings come up through here, I've got a couple more screws to put in the, to make this solid. But when the strings come up through here, they're going to cut this at first and, and tension up. But those uh, tension pins that are underneath there will ultimately hold uh, the strings in place without cutting anything. And then we've got our volume control right there that we can just turn. And once that's tightened up, everything will look good. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to put this pickup, this coil, in place. This is pretty slick. It's, it's pretty shallow. It's got a wood cover. That wood cover is slotted. And we're going to put that about right here. And we're going to run the wires uh, on this side so they can be drilled down into that hole. Remember that hole we put in here with the big bit going all the way through? They're going to go down in here and run under the... Uh, bridge of this bottle and end up hooking in back in here where the volume control is down in that slot. Now I actually want this to be down into the wood here and so for me to create that I'm going to pull that out of the way and then I'm going to have to sink this down here and I think the quickest way to do that is to take a Forstner bit that's just a tad bigger than the coil right there and then I'm going to drill a hole there and then one over here and line that up straight and then what will happen is I'll drill a series of holes and I'll take a chisel and knock that off so that's a quick way to rough this in where it sits down and then this will be a little bit above the uh, board here it'll all be well and then in that process we'll find where that channel is right there All right, there's the first one. We'll come all the way over here now. All right, there we go. Now all I have to do is take this and cut me a little line right here, like so. And then I'll take a chisel once I've got that cheater line cut right there and knock that off. All right, I've got just about every tool here, but... The last one is this little wheel, stone wheel. I'm going to be able to put that right down in there like that. So i got to dr drill a hole right here for these wires to go over to the potentiometer. Hey, have you ever wondered what these are really for? They're for pulling cloth coated wires through a diddly bow. Board. That's what they're for. What'd you think they were for? Anyway, I'm going to use this heavier wire running through the body uh, and hook that up to there. And then, of course, this will sit like this. This will sit over. It'll be flush. I'll cut this yardstick fingerboard off the appropriate place there and on this side, and everything will be clean and hidden. The wires will be all protected. All right, so I'm putting a mark there. And one right there. There we go. Okay, you guys know this part if you've seen my graphics video. If you haven't, there's going to be a link for it right about now up in the upper corner there on the right. I'm just taking Mod Podge. And putting these playing cards down. These are going to be 
the graphic. And now once those are done and dried into place, I got a couple coats. I'm going to put this yardstick fingerboard down and measure out the fret markers like we talked before. And I'll use drywall screws or something for those. All right, now we're starting to get a little bit better idea of what this is going to look like. Houston, we have a problem. My Hollywood bottle just broke. Well, what are we going to do now? Looks like everything Hollywood was painted up to be. Well, no problem because I got this old Alka Seltzer bottle. And what do you know? It's the exact same size. Bingo. Getting down to the final details here. We covered up the wire hole for the pin jack here uh, and made this out of a Altoids tin. Now, since this thing is going to hang on the post on the front porch, literally, I've taken this long drill bit and gone all the way down through across the board, like so. And then I've laid the bit like so across here because I want to cut the slightest groove in here like this. Is we're going to put a cable on here to come up through here and attach a ring here so it can hang on the wall. Now I'm going to take this cable, a steel cable, stranded cable, and I'm going to run it down through the neck like so. And then I'm going to show you a little trick. I don't know how many of you have worked for junk pile drilling companies, but if you have and you've ever had to make your own crane chokers or rigging, you know that this stranded cable, if you unwind it like so, put a ring on it, and then run it back into itself, you can make your own choker. Right, there we go. Got some shrink wrap on there to cover up those ends. And yeah, if you haven't worked for a junk, pile oil field company so you can make your own crane rigging i don't know how you live through life okay it's done let's give it a once over with the infamous flyby here all right we got this contraption done it's time to plug it in. I got the little uh, rolling micro cube over here and I've got these Joyo wireless pickups to take the place of guitar cable. I'm going to do an episode on those uh, in the near future, but you just plug this into the jack like so. all right that's it how's that for junk like you've never seen before taking trash to a whole new low i'm thinking i should make a few more instruments out of something like two string whatever i'm going to be thinking about that way subscribe playlists and up here are the i cards up at the top right up there when you see that i click on it there's some links there for you stuff you're really going to enjoy stuff that's going to change your life so time i fess up uh the term front porch train i wish i could claim that but i can't it belongs to reverend payton who did a song called front porch train learn the words sing it teach everybody anyway there's an eye popping up right now so you can see 
Reverend's Front Porch Train. So shout out to Restaurant out of Long Beach, California, and I'll see you next time.